Hi Hoopers, Michelle McCoy here. In this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you this fun move called the behind the back juggle toss. This is what it looks like. And I'm coming to you today from the beautiful surrounding outdoors of Mountain Home, Arkansas, where I live, and fall is almost gone. So I wanted to get out one more time to see some of the pretty colors before they're all gone. And I thought it would be a great opportunity to shoot a quick tutorial to share with you all. And especially considering the juggle toss is one of the moves that shows up more often in my flow than most other moves. It's really fun, but in addition to that, it is a great transitional move, ways to piece together moves going from vertical to horizontal plane and on body to off body. And we'll really dig deeper into those transitions after we cover the basics of this move. But first, right off the bat, I want to tell you what hoop I'm using to demonstrate this move. And this is my 30 inch, three fourths, Poly Pro, and it's taped with a pretty color morph tape on it. It's pretty for fall outdoor hooping. Um, I would recommend using a lighter, smaller hoop for this move just because you will have more control over it. With, heavy, with heavier hoops, you're going to have to put a lot more force into the release, and the hoop might get a little bit more wobbly as it's rotating on your hand behind your back. And we're really gonna have to break this trick down into separate pieces before we immediately put the release, the roll, and the catch all together into one smooth movement. So let's jump right into the basics of this move. So you wanna hold the hoop in your dominant hand, which for me is my left hand. So if you're right-handed, you might want to start with the hoop in your right hand, but also I'd also just encourage you to try it both ways and see what feels comfortable for you because even if you are right-handed, beginning in your left hand might feel more natural. So try it both ways and see. I'm gonna start with the hoop in my left hand. So I am um, facing the same direction as my hoop. I got the hoop on my left side in my left hand with my thumb facing up. I got a fairly loose grip on the hoop because you're gonna want to throw the hoop behind your back into the palm of your other hand. So to set up for this move, bring your hoop out to the side and bring your other hand right against your body. Your palm open, facing out, and your thumb facing up. So you want to aim to toss the hoop, lightly toss the hoop, right into the palm of that hand behind your back. So just practice that piece first, just releasing the hoop and catching it behind your back. When I am releasing the hoop, I am releasing it in between my fingers and my thumb. So you can see here, my grip on the hoop is with my thumb and my fingers cradling it on opposite sides and I put a lot of motion into my wrist here, kind of like the same type of motion going into a chest roll, because we want to release the hoop with a lot of control. We don't wanna just fling it behind our backs and hope that it magically ends up where we want it to. So with a lot of control, begin putting that motion into your wrist, swaying the hoop back and forth. Your other hand is in position Gently release the hoop, catch it behind your back. So practice that for a while, build up some muscle memory. And once you got that down, you can move on to the second part, which is getting the hoop into a roll behind your back. So for this part, you want to catch the hoop and its momentum will make the hoop want to keep going towards your opposite side of your body. So allow the hoop to drop onto your thumb for one rotation. And when the hoop comes back up for its second rotation, stick the rest of your fingers into the hoop. So now the hoop will be rotating 
around your fingers and that's really hard to do slow. So I'll put some of this in slow motion for you so you can get a better look at that. So now you want to just focus on getting comfortable with rotating the hoop in a vertical level plane behind your back. And that might be a little bit trickier than it sounds. Even here you can see I'm struggling with keeping my hoop level. Um, part of the trick is keeping your body and your hoop facing the same way because if you start to go off at an angle like this the hoop's going to get wobbly and it'll mess up your trick so first get down the catch second get down the catch into a roll behind your back so the hoop is roll rolling around my fingers now and then we can add in the release and the catch so for the release you again just want to gently toss the hoop up in front of you and then immediately catch it with your beginning hand the hand that is releasing the hoop at the beginning of the move which should be your dominant hand for me that's my left hand you're going to catch it the same way as you release it with your thumb facing up palm facing your body so all together now release grab roll release catch so when you release the hoop you can kind of see how my fingers gently release it and point up towards the sky you don't really want to like toss it because you'll lose a lot of control of the hoop in doing that you want to just release it and point those fingers up and the entire time that this hand is behind your back it is in full contact with your body. It is resting against my side here. So you really wanna to try to reach as far behind your back as you can. That also helps give you more control. Catch. So when you are practicing your behind the back juggle toss, just remember to practice it in those separate parts. And then as you master those, you can slowly start to piece them together until you get your full behind the back juggle move down. And it'll feel awesome once you finally nail this move. And a couple troubleshooting tips. As a beginner with this move, it's probably going to be a little bit challenging to keep the hoop from getting wobbly so you really have to experiment with the hoops momentum going into this move to keep it on a vertical plane especially while it's rotating behind your back and then how much force you have to put into the hoop to release it so that will just kind of come through trial and error and that is pretty much all of the basics of this move but really it just comes down to you committing to it and putting in the practice time and the patience and of course always keep your practices lighthearted and make sure that you're having a lot of fun and i want to show you real quick my attempt to this move from my right hand which is my opposite hand that i never ever use or practice my tricks in everything is from my left hand and that's also one thing i really want to encourage you to do while you're still early on in your hoop journey is when you were learning all these new moves, learn them in your natural current and your opposite current for on body hooping and from your dominant hand and your non-dominant hand for 
off body hooping that will benefit you tremendously down the road and it's really catching up with me now as a more advanced hooper i'm having to go back to the basics and relearn a lot of these moves from my opposite side so i want to show you my attempt at this from my right hand <laughs> Not too bad, but sloppy. So you can see how there's a lot of room for improvement there. Um, but that is pretty much the behind the back juggle toss. So once you get down your basic behind the back juggle toss, you can really start to have some fun and bring your creativity into play by coming up with some of your own ways to transition in and out of this move and create some really fun combos with it. So I wanna show you a few of my favorites real quick and I'm actually gonna take off my super comfy vest because I don't want it to get tangled up in the hoop. And my husband always makes fun of me when I wear this vest for some reason, but I like it. <laughs> Okay, so from our behind the back juggle toss, we've covered catching it in your dominant hand the same way that you released it. Another option to that is to release the hoop from the hand that's behind your back and toss it up into a chest roll so it never comes back into contact with your starting hand. So this is what that looks like. And for this move, you really want to make sure that you first have down the release and the rolling behind your back. And then from there, you're going to lean back as soon as you release the hoop so that the hoop doesn't get caught on your shoulder here when it's coming up in front of you because you want it to clear your shoulder and roll right up onto your chest like so. I'm going to show this to you from a different angle. One more time in slow motion. And you also have to kind of, again, play with the momentum when you're releasing the hoop from that roll behind your back. You have to put a little bit more force into it than you would to just go to this transition. When you're going into a chest roll, you kind of have to push it up a little bit more to get it to pop all the way back up in front of you and have enough momentum to roll into a chest roll. So that's another one of those things that you'll just figure out through trial and error. Um, and then it's also very important during that transition to keep this hand very close to your body and make sure that your other arm is kind of just out of the way. Um, you might find it easier to tuck it in towards your front or to raise it up and have the hoop come over your armpit. Kind of just transition or uh, not transition, kind of just experiment to see what works best for you. Okay, so another awesome way to transition out of this move is to go right into a reverse escalator. And I cover that in my online guide to hoop dance course, along with a lot of other moves that I'm uh, mentioning here like the tuck toss and isolations and isopop sweeps so you can head on over to my 
online guide to hoop dance course and enroll there to learn all those awesome moves if you're interested. Um, another awesome way to get out of this move is to do a head toss, <laughs> which is definitely a bit more advanced and it <laughs> took me a lot of patience and frustration and bangs to the face <laughs> to get down that move. But it's really fun and I'll cover that in a future more advanced course. Um, another awesome way to get out of this move is to go right into elbow hooping like so. And for that, instead of releasing the hoop back to your original hand, you just release it and stick your dominant elbow into the hoop. So the hoop is actually rolling behind you now. So this is an awesome opportunity to do some elbow breaks. Those were really sloppy. And then just continue flowing from there. And those are some of my favorite ways to transition out of this move. And I think I mentioned already that the easiest way to transition into this move is from a tuck toss, grabbing it, and now you're all set up. Ta-da! <laughs> and that concludes this tutorial. If you guys loved this tutorial, like I said earlier, you can head on over to autumnflow.com to get some more information and watch some sneak peek videos along with my promo video for my online guide to hoop dance course. And that course is huge. You can really get a lot out of it no matter what level you are and how far along you are into your hoop journey. It includes over 50 video tutorials broken down just like this one. So go check that out. And also, if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to me. I love hearing from you guys and connecting with you guys and happy hooping.